I'm really, really starting to fall in love with the idea of bringing a Tesla to my house. Hey, hey everybody, Brock Frady here, helping you enjoy your ride. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at this incredible 2021 Tesla Model 3, standard. Now, there's nothing standard, in my opinion, about this vehicle at all because mainly it's a Tesla and Tesla is so far ahead of everyone when it comes to technology and safety. The thing can drive itself for goodness sakes. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at the outside, the inside. I'm gonna end up in the driver's seat where we're gonna take a look at all the buttons and technology. Although in a Tesla, there are only a couple of buttons. And then we're gonna wrap up the video by taking it for a drive. But before we begin, I would like to say a huge thank you to Impex Auto Sales in Greensboro, North Carolina for the opportunity to film this Tesla Model 3. I'll be sure to leave all of Impex Auto Sales contact information, including their website in the description box below. I am so excited by the fact that one day I will own a Tesla. It may not be too far in the near future, but one day I'll own a Tesla. Is it gonna be a Model 3, a Model Y, a Model X, a Model S, or some model that's not even out yet? I don't know. But most likely, I would start off with this one. This is a Model 3. This is the standard range Model 3. So for all intents and purposes, this is kind of like the introductory level Tesla. But right now, like I said in the introduction, this thing is so jam packed with technology and all the cool things that it can do that it puts all other standard model vehicles out on the market today, both electric and non-electric and hybrid and diesel and all those other varieties. It puts them all so much to shame that it's, it's just incredible. All of the safety features, all the design elements, um, the, just the way the front of it looks, the way the rear of it looks. And here's the thing about a Tesla, you know a Tesla from a mile away when you see it. Whether you love it, whether you hate it, you know it's a Tesla. And in my opinion, it is a super cool looking car that just has so much to offer. Now this is a key card, and you've probably seen this in other videos. This is not necessarily a long-term solution for opening and using the Tesla. Uh, Tesla actually wants you to download an app, connect it with your car, and use your phone as your key, but you can use this kind of in a pinch if you want to. In order to use it, all you have to do is walk up to the door, and you can see where the camera is on this pillar here. You just tap under that camera or you just place the key card on the pillar under that camera and you can get in you can then use the vehicle uh, then whenever you get out you tap it again or you place it on the pillar again and it locks it let's take a look at how that works so all i have to do is approach the vehicle and you can tell it's locked right now because the settings are such that the mirror right here is folded in and that's how you can tell the doors are locked so all i'm going to do is tap it here and it works wonderfully. And then in order to open it, I push on the big portion of the door handle and then I just basically open it right up. Now, the thing about a Tesla that's kind of unique, whenever you open the door, uh, it goes all to the last settings that you had it programmed before. So climate control, radio, everything goes back to the way it was or it starts up the way it, you left it. So I can get in the car right now. It's actually running. Then once I'm in the Tesla, all I need to do is take this key card, place it right down by the cup holder, and I can just put it there and then put it in the cup holder and it sees it. It knows that I'm you know, in the vehicle and that I'm okay to drive the car because I have the key. So then I can just put it in drive and go once I buckle my seatbelt, of course. Then once I'm finished using the Tesla, all I do is put it in park and then I just get out. You see this, it's running and everything, air is coming out, all systems go, right? Well, all I need to do to get out of the vehicle is tap this button, and pops open the door. I close the door, I tap the key fob under here, folds the mirror in, and now the doors are locked and I'm ready to go. I never once hit a start button or anything because it automatically starts when the door is opened. That's pretty incredible. And when you get in the Tesla, you can see an image right here on this beautiful touch screen. You can see in the front, it says frunk open, trunk open. 
and then there's a lock icon. I can press this and it just opened the front trunk. I'm gonna open the rear also and let's take a look at those. The amount of space that you have in the front is kind of minimal, but that's more space than you have up front in a normal car because there's an engine there. That is a decent amount of space. You can get a couple of weekend bags in there or any number of other things that will fit in a space that size. I love the front. Very, very minimal up here as far as what you can do. Basically, you can refill the washer fluid. There's also a tow hook inside of this space. And then if you do need to have it towed, there is a little panel right here. You just pop that out, screw in the tow hook that's gonna be in the front in there, and you're good to go. Now the trunk in the Model 3 is a completely different story than the front. You actually have a ton of room, and it's like it's not like it's deep uh, as far as going down is concerned, but it goes way back all the way to the backs of the seats, and that's a good amount of space. So look at this space, just how big it is. You can get a large amount of stuff back here in this back trunk space. You can lift up this panel here, look at there you have even more space for storage. This bag is gonna be your charging cable and the door for your charging uh, port is gonna be right here. And you can open that from the inside on the touch screen. You just plug it in right there and then plug it to an outlet or plug it to a supercharger. Oh, by the way, you also have another camera right there, of course. I love the fact that Tesla does very little uh, as far as outside badging. The only really other outside badging that you can get on a Tesla is if this had the performance package on it and that it was a dual motor right there. But essentially the only thing that's on the outside is a Tesla logo on the front and a Tesla logo on the back. I meant to show you this. If you want to access the back without opening it from the inside, there is a rubber button right here, basically directly in line with the Tesla icon or logo. You can just press that, it opens right up. And then when you're finished using the trunk, there's a button here. You can just press the button and there you go. Closes it right up. There's a federal requirement in all trunks that says that you have to have a way to exit the trunk of a vehicle in the event that somebody gets locked inside that trunk. Well, check out the way Tesla does that. You're looking at a lighted button right now on the inside of the Model 3. In the event that somebody gets stuck inside of there, that's where that's gonna be. Most of these are glow-in-the-dark tabs that hang down from a portion inside the trunk. I really like the way Tesla has done this. The part of the Tesla that you're looking at right now is actually the back glass. And here's the reason I'm showing you this. You can see there is like a line right here where it goes from being kind of like tinted, tinted, tinted to glass. And it's clear right here. Well, federally, you're not allowed to tint this back glass. So what Tesla has done is basically tinted this area because it's the area that's located directly above the passenger compartment. And then they've taken this area and done a couple of things, made it clear so that it passes federal tent regulations or lack thereof and they've also put your defrosting grid in the glass there itself. So it's pretty cool because they've created a transition where this would normally be a regular roof and then bringing it down to the clear glass at the back to where they've basically made the tent, the cutoff point for this to give you a designation of this is the back glass, this is the roof. Speaking of that, the roof is not technically one piece of glass. It's actually two pieces of glass. You can see here that there's a line right there and that's one piece of glass for the back and then another piece of glass for the front. Wait, I take that back. It's actually three pieces of glass. One, two, three. So the entire roof portion of the Tesla from here, windshield, top section, glass, back section, all glass, Boy, that's kind of a complicated situation when you really think about it. Three pieces of glass, no tent here, no tent here, fully tinted here. That's a lot going on there. <laughs> Pretty incredible. Now, in my opinion, here's where the Tesla Model 3 may suffer just a little bit. You can see that I have the seat adjusted for the way that I was driving when I came over here. I'm six feet three. Here are my knees. It's not terrible for a short ride, but it's pretty tight. 
you're not going to get three adults back here comfortably at all. You may put us back here for a short trip, uh, but that's okay. You don't really purchase a Model 3 for a cavernous backseat, a really spacious backseat situation. But here's what I'm surprised by. I'm surprised by the headroom uh, because, you know, the high roof line here, it actually gives you plenty of headroom right here. So that's, that's really, really nice. One of the other things that I really like about this one in particular is the white interior. The interior is obviously made of a synthetic material and it feels really, really durable, very clean, very nice. Is this gonna show wear and tear very much? I don't think so. I think it's gonna be a really durable material. And in addition to that, I think it's gonna be really, really easy to clean. Uh, I love the white interior on this particular one, like I said, especially in contrast with the black interior exterior on the outside of the vehicle. Uh, but let's take a look at that white interior a little more in depth. So like I said, the, you can see here with the sun shining right on this material, that it, they gave it almost a leatherish look with a little bit of grain look inside of it. Uh, you can see the stitching there that matches the color of this material itself, but it's all really, really well put together. It's nice and soft uh, and it's durable. It has almost a feel of leather, but not quite. It actually feels a little bit softer than leather, but I really, really like the contrast of what this leather or what this material looks like uh, in contrast to the exterior of this one because it's black on the outside. Really cool look, nice and clean. Now this is what it looks like from my perspective. You can see here my, my knees are hitting the back of the seat, but that's okay, again, it's, it's, it's a small vehicle and, uh, and this is not bad for, for short trips. The cool thing about it though, and this actually helps, you're, you're not actually looking at the seats right now, I'm pointing it up out of the roof. And if you could be here right now, you. I can actually see through the roof, so it gives it more of an airy feel, and that actually helps a lot with the feel of the cabin with it being kind of tight back here. There are a couple of power points right here for your iPhone charging capabilities, and then you've got a vent there that you can see. The thing I like also is the fact that the floor is nice and flat, and that gives you foot room if you have a third passenger back here. Here are a couple of cup holders. They are integrated into the center of the center armrest right there, and that's gonna fold up flat here. This is the inside of the driver's door. You can see that it looks luxurious, but sleek. You can tell this is kind of a lower grade model of Tesla simply by the interior look and the interior feel of the Model 3. Uh, you do have a little contrast stitching right there, Alcantara, a nice little like metallic feeling panel right here. This is actually kind of like a white color here that matches the color of the interior seating surfaces. But the beauty of Tesla is that it's understated everything is very minimalistic I absolutely love that switches here for your windows and then this is to exit the Tesla Model 3 and that's it simplicity at its finest here's one of the most cool things about the Tesla Model 3 while the back seat may be tight because it's a small vehicle naturally the front seat is a pretty cool experience once you're behind the wheel it actually feels great the layout feels nice nice and linear uh, everything is very accessible, very reachable. The screen here is super clean, super easy to use and operate. The roof makes it feel much more open and airy. I like where your arms hit and where you're able to place your hands on the wheel and just everything makes sense. Everything as far as your line of sight is very easy. There are very few blind spots and what blind spots there are. Uh, cameras help out with that, especially backing in and out of spaces in parking lots. On a lot of vehicles nowadays, it's almost like manufacturers are trying to win a prize for how many buttons they can put on their steering wheel and everything is getting way complicated. How in the world can a manufacturer put two little wheels and that serve also as buttons on their steering wheel and even compete? Because it's like, what are you going to put on this steering wheel that is you can actually use and is accessible? Uh, then you have your turn signal switches here, and this right here is your uh, gear selector. So it's it's like a lesson in clean and efficient design on how to how to design a steering wheel. And the steering wheel is like the most important thing of a vehicle because it's what you actually use to drive the vehicle. But here's one of the things that I want to show you. I was baffled by how to 
um, move the steering wheel or the steering column up, down, in and out to adjust it to your position of how you're going to drive. But look what Tesla has done. You can see the icon right here on the screen. It says steering wheel. And when you push it, that pops up. So what you're going to do from this point is go to the left scroll wheel on your steering wheel and you're going to roll it up or down and then you're going to push it to the right or to the left to move the steering wheel. And that works just like this. That's out. Then you'll push it to the right to go in. But what you have to do is you have to go to the screen to make the selection to change what this does in the screen. So this thing can do, you know, it can serve as your volume control. It can serve as your button to make it fart on the outside of the vehicle, which is always critically important. But whenever you make the selection to adjust the steering wheel on the screen, that's what it does. Pretty fantastic, isn't it? And right now on the right side of the steering wheel, this scroll button serves as the right, uh, radar cruise control link that is going to maintain between you and the vehicle in front of you. So what I can do if I press it to the right, I can see an icon pop up here and now I can adjust that. You can see it's on three, four, five, six. So that is actually represents car lengths. So it's going to maintain seven. So it, it goes all the way down to or up to seven car lengths that it's going to maintain between me and the vehicle in front of me whenever it's using the radar cruise control. So five all the way down to three is the minimum. So between seven and three car lengths, it will maintain. And I just do that by pushing this left or right. The stock that we're looking at right now is for wipers, lights, and turn signal. When I push the stock forward, that is the automatic high beam that uh, that actually comes up on the screen. I can see it right now. It looks like a headlight with an A in the middle. When I pull it toward me, that allows me to use my high beams at night manually. When I push this in, it does the wipers and I can just keep pushing it in, you know, wipe more or wipe less. But right now it's in auto. So it actually has rain sensing wipers. And then of course I can go turn signal. And whenever I press it down once, it does three blinks. So you can actually hear it tapping. And that's a lane change icon or a lane change feature that allows me to change lanes without actually fully engaging the turn signal. But then I can press it down again until it stays. It'll, it'll basically double click. It doesn't stay. It does come back up, but it double clicks. And now you can see that the turn signal is just continually blinking. Then to disengage that, or if I'm not actually turning to disengage it, I just tap it up again and it stops. And the stock that we're looking at right now is our gear selector. You can see here on the end, you press the button for park. You push the stock up for reverse, uh, then neutral, and then you pr uh, actually press it down for drive. And then you also, of course, have radar cruise control here and you tap that down while you're driving to engage radar cruise control. You do a couple of other things too. There's a, there's an Easter egg called, uh, I believe it's called rainbow road, uh, that you can tap down multiple times in the right setting, uh, in order to do rainbow road. And that's, that's actually, that that's a cool thing that's inside toy box. Manufacturers have a lot to learn from Tesla. If they want to go in the direction of a pleasing aesthetic, whenever you're on the inside of the vehicle, please take notes from Tesla. It's so clean in here. The cabin is so nice. It's so linear. It's very minimalistic. Now I understand that there are preferences like people have preferences for architecture. Are you a minimalist or are you somebody that likes traditional or all those things, whatever. But as far as your vehicle is concerned, Whenever you get inside a car, there's a difference between minimalist and having such a big bank of buttons and things to do that it actually becomes more confusing and it takes away from the inside of the vehicle. Some manufacturers, it almost seems like there's a contest to see how many buttons they can put inside their vehicles. I'm not going to name any, but you know, if you're one of those people that has a car like that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, having said that, here is the thing about Tesla. 
on some of the functions and features of the vehicle, you do have to go to this great big screen in order to access certain functions. So here's what I recommend doing. You really actually need to practice because of the fact that Tesla is thinking so far outside of the box on some of these things because they want to keep their cabin clean. You actually need to get in here and to practice because it is a different experience. It's almost in some ways, it's almost like learning to drive a vehicle again. Let's take a look at this whole center console area. Right here you can see what looks to be two different panels. That is going to be automatic charging for your cell phone. So whenever you place your uh, cell phone there, it's going to charge it. There it goes. You have a place for two cell phones right there. Then you have a little box right here for basic general storage of things. And right there in the very back or the back on the back wall of this, there are two chargers. And so that's where you can uh, plug in your charging cable right there. Uh, right here is a little mat that you can put your stuff on, a little LED light inside of the box to light your way, a couple of cup holders, and then right here there is a, a little latch to pop the box. Everything's very simple, very clean. And then here is a, a cigarette lighter adapter for your charger, another charging mechanism right there. That's really basically it for the center console. Okay, in this portion, we're going to cover this beautiful screen. I'm not going to go into super duper detail in this portion because of the fact that I went into really great detail in the Tesla Model Y video. I will leave a link for that video in the description box so that you can go there if you want to. So we're going to do kind of a, a brief overview. Looking first at the very bottom is going to be a menu of buttons, and this is going to be for the car itself. So when you press this button, it goes to quick controls. Then you can see down here, you have all of your different controls right here. Everything basically on this screen is kind of customizable and this is the way you're gonna actually make the vehicle your own. I really recommend spending some time here. So when you are in quick controls, you have exterior lights, you can adjust your mirrors and your steering wheel, you can fold your mirrors in. And this is really cool. You can always fold your mirrors at this location. So that's programmable. So you can, like if you get to your house, you can actually make it so that it, when the car senses that you're at your house, it always it will automatically fold your mirrors. Window lock and then display brightness. You can make it auto. So automatic, whenever you press auto, it's, it's taking it down because it's kind of bright here, but I'm actually gonna deactivate auto, take it to 100% for the purpose of this. Uh, so that you can actually see it clearly. Then you can go to specific controls. So lights, they're on automatic. I recommend keeping it that way so that whenever the sun starts to go down, the headlights will cut on automatically. Dome lights, high beam, auto high beam, all those things. Steering wheel lights, you can actually light up the little controls on the steering wheel, the, the wheels that we looked at earlier. Uh, you can make those come on and that's that. Then locks, this is pretty cool. You have your key card, and this is the key card that I showed you earlier in the video. And then you can make it lock the doors whenever you walk away, unlock on park. A lot of these have to do with the uh, either the key fob that you can purchase or um, linking it to your mobile phone as well. Display, automatic night mode, day mode. You ought to see the uh, night mode of this. It is so cool. Screen clean mode is pretty neat. You can press that and then you can clean it with a cloth. Um, and uh, so that's all pretty cool stuff there. Stopping mode is really, really cool. You can see it says creep, roll, and hold. This almost makes it like so you can drive the Tesla with one pedal. What I mean by that, whenever it's on hold, it will actually really, really stiffen up um, whenever you take your foot off of the accelerator. It's almost like it's applying the brakes for you. So if you're driving around, say, in a neighborhood, you can basically brake the vehicle by simply letting off of the accelerator a little bit. You have to experience that, and that takes some getting used to, but I really, really like that. The other thing about hold as well, it says here, maximizes range by extending regenerative braking to lower speeds and automatically blends in brakes to hold the vehicle at a stop. 
it is almost like you can basically drive the vehicle with one pedal. Roll eases that up some, and then creep slowly move when the pedals are released. Creep is kind of like the traditional way a car is. So when you let off the gas, the engine kind of engages the transmission and makes it roll forward a little bit. But hold, that's that's pretty cool. And that takes some getting used to. When you, when you first drive it on hold, it it's kind of weird. Steering mode, sport, standard and comfort. That's obvious. It's going to stiffen the steering wheel based on uh, or loosen the steering wheel based on your selection there. And then acceleration, standard or chill. I like, I like standard. And then it says slip start. That if it's stuck in the snow or mud, you activate that. Autopilot. This is very cool. Um, I'm not going to really go over this uh, that much, but uh, autopilot. There is a charge for that. It's like a monthly fee and uh, self-driving, full self-driving visualization preview. Um, so this is all stuff that gets a little bit complex, and I don't really want to talk about it because I don't ever want to talk about the vehicle actually driving itself there's just too much there so uh look into that yourself <laughs> navigation here are all kinds of different navigation things trip planner and oh the, what trip planner does is it, it tells you where superchargers are so you can actually know where you're going to be able to charge your tesla if you're on a trip all kinds of cool stuff there safety and security allow mobile access that allows you to uh, get into the vehicle with your cell phone service owner's manual that's all really cool the thing i like about the owner's manual is that it has all kinds of links and stuff in the owner's manual so whenever you're doing any reading on articles on the owner's manual it will actually pop up little hyperlinks and let's just say driving and let's just say mirrors so whenever you're reading here, you can see that there are links, see cold weather best practices, and then it, it's almost like you're reading a blog or something. And then it, it just links to all kinds of other things. So it gives you a really good idea of how things work in the vehicle because it's your owner's manual. I really recommend doing that. You can also watch videos uh, on how to use the vehicle as well. Adjust headlights, headlight calibration and process. I can hear some things going on up front headlights should only be adjusted by trained service technicians so we're not going to mess with that at all uh, notifications camera calibration only do that with if you know what you're doing and then there's software stuff then this is how you pop the glove box so the glove box just popped open as you can see so i can x out of that and now keep in mind that that was only when i press the vehicle control that was only in quick controls all the way down here so that's just that one button there then here's music you can do all kinds of cool things here so then you can go down here and you can see radio then there's phone streaming all your different things that you can stream here uh, spotify karaoke you can, if you've got a friend ride along or a group of friends ride along, all of y'all can do karaoke right there. Then there's tune in. This is really neat. I, I like this. It says popular stations in your area. How cool is that? So in this area, a lot of people listen to Rock 92 and K-Love. That's a really neat thing right there. And that's tune in. And then settings. This is how you can control the audio settings, tones, balance, all those things of the vehicle. And then any music. You can just search and it searches all the different databases of the things that you have available in the vehicle sports as far as the music or the audio things that you have available to you you will never ever get bored then this little icon is all your cameras so the third icon over you can see that that's the rear camera uh, that's the left side oops uh, that's the left camera that's the right camera you can see when i open the door that's the camera that's on the outside on the driver's side windshield wipers i recommend doing auto and so it automatically is going to wipe as the as it starts to rain and then this drops uh, this pulls up a whole cool bank again uh, this allows you to call there's your calendar cameras energy charging and then uh, internet i can pull this back up uh, entertainment <laughs> so you can see here i can play centipede and it's going to load it and I think now what this does is it allows me to use my um, my uh, steering wheel as my controller. It says coin. So let's hit start. Oh, that's up and down. Oh, there's there's left and right. 
and I'm sure I can have sound, but I actually have the sound turned off right now for the purpose of making the video. <laughs> so you can see here, then there's an X right here. So if I'm bored, I'm waiting for somebody outside at a doctor's appointment or something, whatever, look at all the video games that I have. That is absolutely awesome. And then there's theater mode. I can tune into my Netflix. I just put in my credentials. There's YouTube, uh, Tesla tutorials. That's what I meant before where you can pull up and watch tutorial videos on your vehicle. That is all under entertainment. And then here's Toy Box, AKA Easter eggs. I have a huge video of the Tesla Model Y. Again, the link is in the description box below to where I cover all of these. So you can, uh, you can see how all that works. That is just the coolest thing. <laughs> far seats that's the seat heaters right there it's three level uh, AC so this is going to be all of your uh, different controls for your climate settings you can see here it, it actually is showing me the air that is coming out of the passenger side and the driver's side here uh, then I can actually tap this and change the direction so I can move the air up and down see that and that neat so that's how I can uh, change the air coming out I can press auto and it's automatically going to adjust it. You can see here it's low, so I, I have that. Let's sync those up. So I have that right now. Low makes it actually work. You know, it's kind of like the central air in your house, so it's going to make it uh, blow really, really cold when you put it on low. Then check this out. Climate will turn off after you leave the car, but I can I can make this work. So I can if I, my dog is in here, I can keep the air on and uh, climate and screen will stay on after you exit. Sentry mode will be disabled for pets. Never leave a child unattended. This is for pets only. So right now it's blowing the air nice and cool and uh, everything is working really well and it's in dog mode. I can hit camp mode. The car will stay on until the battery reaches 20%. Sentry mode security alarm and walk away lock will be disabled. So there's camp mode. Man, they, they just literally have thought of everything. Now it's back to auto. So it's automatically gonna maintain the 71 degree temperature that I'm telling it to maintain in the vehicle the whole time. And then right here is the, the seat heat for the passenger seat, defrost, and then volume all right there. Oh, I also have, you can see here where there are little icons here. So there's my uh, tire pressure and then I can see charging information all right here. Here's trip A, here's trip B, and there's my odometer. The vehicle has 81 miles on it. And then, uh, so that's it. That's what it has right there. And then if I wanna lock the doors while I'm inside, I just press the lock button. And now the doors are locked. I'm still getting used to, to how Teslas drive. I've, I've driven a handful of them now, but it's still, still kind of a, kind of a, unique experience i imagine if you actually got one of these things that the the new car honeymoon situation would last a while especially if you're really into cars um just because of of what this thing can do what what tesla is and just how unique and how different they are uh it's 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 quite an experience i love the turning radius on these things they are absolutely fantastic and here's another thing that I absolutely love about a Tesla is the acceleration. Gosh, it's it's such a nice experience. The thing that I notice about this one, this one's not the performance model, so it doesn't have the extra oomph, but it also doesn't have the, have the extra oomph on the price tag as well. Whenever you really press on the accelerator, it doesn't make that sound of the just sheer force of the electricity pouring into the wheels uh, this one is more quiet believe it or not than a tesla with the with the uh, performance package on it so it, it being a standard model there's that element of it, it it's actually a little bit more quiet um, but i'm still trying to get used to the feel of a vehicle literally making zero sound now the thing about it making zero engine sound is the fact that they actually need to focus more on making the cabin uh, more quiet to wind noise. 
So whenever you have no engine sound, it actually, your, your wind noise is going to be accentuated. So what Tesla has done is they've made this glass, the, basically all of the front glass, the, the front glass here and the windshield double paned. There's actually two pieces of glass and you can roll down the window and fill the top edge. And there is an acoustic laminate that runs in between the two pieces of glass. It's the same for the windshield. And that makes it that so that it has virtually zero wind noise up front. I'm really, really starting to fall in love with the idea of bringing a Tesla to my house. <laughs> the only thing is, for me, is the whole charging situation because obviously I don't have a supercharger or anything other than a, the, the charging cable that would be in the back to plug into my house. And it takes like, in order to fully charge one of these things, at least on the performance model uh, wide that I, that I did a few weeks ago, it, it seemed like it would have taken about two days almost to charge it fully um, just using a regular power from my house. So you obviously, in order to do it efficiently, you would want to go to a supercharging station or you would want to up, upgrade your, your house situation to charge it faster. Uh, I, I have the steering wheel adjusted right now to just like regular mode. It's not performance mode or anything or sport. Uh, and that's that's actually really, really nice. I'm gonna get it out on the highway so that you can have an idea of what it feels or what it sounds like and everything out on the uh, interstate. And the, the whole operation for uh, the way the accelerator is set up right now, it's, in, it's, a, it's actually in creep mode. Uh, and that still feels a little bit funky because when I let my foot off of the accelerator, it still has that kind of brakey feel. It almost feels like it's applying the brakes itself, even in, in the, the, the most relaxed version of, of how that accelerator uh, pedal can be set up. So here we go. We're going to get it out on the interstate here. There's that whistle a little bit. So now we're already up to 65. You hear how quiet it is? Of course, there's some wind noise because we're doing 70 right now. And the other thing about this thing is that it just feels so confident. It's, it's a small vehicle, but everything is so tight. You just feel like you have really good control. So here are my final thoughts on the Tesla Model 3. I think of all the Tesla models, this is probably the most bang for your buck. You get the most of the Tesla experience, you know, the crazy acceleration, all of the cool gadgets and all of the cool features and everything without breaking the bank, so to speak. And the thing that I love about the Tesla Model 3 the most basically is pretty much how easy it is to use. If you can use an iPhone, you can use this vehicle. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but you can do it. It took you a little getting used to for your iPhone too. So I love the Model 3. I think this could be my favorite model of all the Teslas that I've tested so far. I have reviewed a Model S, but I've not driven it yet. I imagine my mind would be blown by a Model S you know, P100D or something crazy like that. But as far as practicality and getting into the Tesla experience, in my opinion, this is where it's at. I love this vehicle. I mean, come on, I drive a Prius. So this is a natural fit for me, the Model 3. I really, really recommend you taking a look at a Tesla. If you are at all interested in the electric car market, this thing is the real deal. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for our look at the 2021 Tesla Model 3 standard. Again, I would like to say a huge thank you to Impex Auto Sales in Greensboro, North Carolina for the opportunity to film this cool Model 3. Be sure to check them out on the worldwide internet machine. Their link is below. But remember, the most important thing of all, have a wonderful day, everybody.